So we've, uh, kind of that's one of our focuses. We provide educational materials that can be incorporated into that a little bit. And just a little background on our, our company. We're also vertically integrated, have everything in our warehouse um, and people on staff to do like the structural, detailed structural report that we'll uh, provide as part of this to make sure both the, the schools are up for the additional two pounds of dead weight and uh, another three or four pounds when you factor in the snow and wind months here. So um, on to the uh, third page of this, I wanted to show you that uh, this is the, uh, this is in Orono, uh, their activity center, and it just shows you that what we're talking about here is a self ballasted system. It just sits on top of the roof membrane. Um, we don't puncture any of the, uh, the membrane and get it uh, down to the uh, electrical room. We'll do uh, things if you have a roof warranty with it to make sure that the roof warranty is avoided as part of the construction. We work with every roofing manufacturer in the state. We do like slip sheets that uh, match the, the roofing surface, or if you have a built up uh, with gravel, we'll do a kind of a foam pad that we use so that the, uh, the rocks don't get pushed down as part of this. But we're very careful about the roofs just to lay it out. And they're uh, correctly south facing at a 10 degree pitch. Uh, we follow all the uh, OSHA and code requirements for the city. Um, and uh, everything that needs to be accessed on the roof will have a walking path to it, including roof variants, uh, HVAC units, we're six feet from the roof edges, stuff like that. So we're uh, really careful with how we go about this. So the next page, we're talking about uh, not only the solar program, but we also get to uh, leverage uh, an opt-in tariff called the PV credit tariff. And when the, uh, we argued with XL Energy back uh, uh, from 2014 to 2019, and they finally agreed that it helps them with their peak load capacities. So uh, they're giving solar people that do solar an added benefit of 7.113 cents for every kilowatt hour that's produced from the hours of one to seven. So that really uh, makes this a better deal for you guys. Uh, and it's just a, you check the box and you're entered into this, there's no qualifying. And that, along with the uh, Solar for Schools grant, is a, makes it a great uh, couple of projects for you. So I'll go on to showing you. Um, I worked with Shannon and Chase to kind of figure out the areas that would work along with our structural engineer looking at the uh, structure. And so based on this one, the, uh, the high school, we're looking at about uh, 183 kilowatts on this uh, spot right here. Um, and. Uh, Based on that, the next page, uh, that 183 kilowatts is going to create uh, $26,946 worth of uh, energy savings. And just to let you know on that, we go actuarial. We have your actual rate plan, which is a general service rate plan, and all the other fees associated with uh, Excel. And we factor those in to come up with that number. So that's what you, uh, you're going to save just with that one project here. We pay you rent revenue uh, so we can get up on the roof and operate and maintain them during the payback. So anything that goes wrong, we'll have our crews out here uh, fixing it for you. So you have total revenue of $27,046. Um, you're gonna pay, uh, this is an energy payment to our company that's divided by 12 on a monthly basis, or you can choose to do it uh, twice a year, once a year, however you wanna do it. But that's what it'll cost you for this. Uh, then you got to get a rider on your insurance policy, and that shouldn't cost you more than $500 annually. Um, if it does, let me talk to the insurance company. We've done enough of these where uh, we can get them in line. Um, so you're going to have total expenses of $6,688. So year one, you're going to have a savings of uh, $20,358. That's uh, the second to last column is the savings on an annual basis, and the last column on a cumulative basis. So you can see that uh, for this project, after 20 years, uh, you're looking at about 531,000 of electrical savings. Over the 30-year panel warranty, we're talking about 1.29,000. Uh, and over the life, we're looking at about $1.698 million of savings. And that's what the life of the, the solar panel should uh, last 40 years for you. There's no moving parts heavy duty um, they should last for you. And so that's the one project on the high school here. Then the second project that we're looking at is on the uh, elementary school. 
And this one, we can get uh, 336 kilowatts on the, uh, the roof, on the areas that uh, should work. So under the uh, kind of the energy, annual energy expense savings summary, for this one, this will create $49,452 worth of uh, savings. Again, we pay the rent revenue so we can operate and maintain it. Uh, total revenue of $49,552. You're going to pay $11,340 uh, in the first year. Also, you got to get that rider on your insurance policy. That This will be $800 because it's a larger system. Total expenses of $12,140. So with this project here, year one, you're going to have a savings of $37,412. And kind of the metrics down below in uh, 20 years, you're looking at $979,000 worth of savings, 1.8 million over 30 years, and 40 years, you're looking at 3.2 million. One other thing I want to note on the middle uh, column there, the insurance maintenance expense and utility fees, you can see that after, uh, there's a 20 year payback with this. After the uh, payback, if you guys want us to continue to operate and maintain the system, um, you're looking at about $6,500 worth of uh, expense to do that, but uh, you can see that you're going to be saving about $82,000 in that year, so it might make sense for you, maybe not. but uh, we're doing that for a lot of customers. And uh, one other thing that you don't see here, because we compressed this, um, the inverters have a 12-year warranty, um, so uh, in year 13, year 25, and year 37, we have a replacement event uh, in that column that you're not seeing because it's condensed. But I'm just showing you and telling you that uh, I'm, I'm trying. We're trying to show everything that you might incur during the, the ownership of this, and they're already factored into these net numbers of savings. And on the following page, uh, we just uh, hold up the two projects to kind of show you uh, the savings again. After 20 years, you're looking at about 1.5 million of savings. Uh, after the 30-year panel warranty, uh, 2.9 million, and 4.8 million over the life of the two projects here. Okay. And on to the next page. Feel free if you have questions. Uh, I'm ready to answer. Uh, the next page. So how we do this? Uh, you guys own this CFP title owner on day one. There's no upfront cost to your district to do this. Um, we monetize the tax credit and uh, the grant and everything to kind of uh, pay for it, and then we wait to get paid back over those 20 years. Um, your only financial obligation is to pay a steep discount on the energy that's created over those first 20 years. Uh, and then after 20 years, you get free energy, and uh, we also, again, operate and maintain the system. And, have uh, actually a department with two guys in there that will be looking at, uh, there's a, a monitoring uh, package that we provide to all of our uh, schools where they uh, you can get on and see the actual uh, instantaneous, I'll get into it in a minute here, but that's what they're going to be looking at to see if your uh, solar array is producing and if there's something wrong with an inverter, panels or whatever, we'll, we'll get out here and take a look and fix it. Um, we also provide um, educational materials. We've been doing it for about 12 years now. Um, you don't have to use our materials, but we have uh, stuff that's kind of geared towards the fifth and sixth grade science classes, um, and also the 11th and 12th grade kind of pathways programs. So if kids don't want to go to college, they have another uh, area they can look at to see if there's some things that interest them. Um, we also, uh, they're designed around the three current learning standards in the state. Uh, some pretty cool stuff, and we've gotten a lot of good feedback from some districts that have used it. The kids have loved it, so it's there for you to use. Here's the uh, monitoring that I talked about, uh, and this will show you uh, daily, weekly, monthly, annually, uh, the production of the system. There's also some feel good stuff here in the bottom right corner. It talks about how much CO2 emission was saved as a result of doing a solar equivalent trees planted. Some cool stuff for kids to kind of learn about. And uh, that's basically uh, the presentation. I'm here to hopefully get your approval to move forward with uh, these projects and sign the contract. If you have questions, you know, as far as damage from natural events, I assume that's what the rider is for the insurance program. Yeah, especially hail. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I'll be able to win. Uh, but uh, we've had some, uh, last year was a pretty big year for Hale. Um, so we kind of know the panels that you need to use to make sure that they're more durable. If you have a, thin, a thinner glass that some people uh, use, then you're going to you're more apt to have some hail damage. And what we're talking about is a 3.2 millimeter um, thickness of glass that's pretty durable and is highly rated. So, if it's up there, let's use January. It's colder than it's not. There's 12 feet of snow. How much do we have to have somebody go up there and shovel the rope all the time to make sure those panels are visible? No, um, there's a, we use what's called SAMS modeling through this program called Helioscope. And in that they uh, uh, project that you guys will be producing like 1,225 uh, watts of power for every watt of uh, uh, energy uh, panel that's up on your roof. We know that's not true because we're operating and maintaining about 400 systems around the state. We know that it's going to be 1,125 kilowatt hours of power. So we've adjusted the numbers to make sure we like to have happy customers, not angry ones, where we over, you know, overestimate the production. So uh, we're uh, assuming there's going to be some uh, winter events that might knock out the solar for two to three weeks at a time and maybe a couple different events. But the thing is, you only uh, produce about 2.4% of the energy during the whole year in like uh, January and December. So. Uh, you could go up there and uh, blow it off or sweep it off and get better production, but it's not worth the manpower, so I just let it be. Okay. Whose expense is it if we need to replace the roof and the solar panel panels are up there? It would be your expense, but it takes, uh, this is a question that pretty much every school district that we've done solar with, uh, because it's a 40 year life, it'll uh, cost you about a year, year and a half worth of savings to do that, and we can do that for you. Um, where you take it off and put it back. So, just so I understand, is the energy sold back into the grid and then we just get a credit on that, or we don't necessarily utilize that energy? You will, it's behind the meter. So, we, the meter. we hook into your electrical room, and so the energy that's created from the solar will be used first. You're not going to be off of the grid. Uh, so, if you have some need to supplement that, then you'll grab it for, from XL Energy. The other good thing about the PV credit tariff is uh, they allow annual banking so that if, uh, if as long as you use 100% of what you create and you don't uh, have any excess, um, then you're going to get full retail credit on your bills. So what happens is during those summer months, the four or five summer months where you produce a lot of energy, it will sit on your bill as a kilowatt hour credit. So you're not selling it to XL Energy at a wholesale rate of 2.3 2 cents and paying the 13 or 14 cents that you guys are paying. So it's a, it's a good good program. The other question too is on the, we, are, we have a program that we are working with. Solar garden? Yeah. Does, would that have any effect on this? Or? Uh, it, it does, um, but uh, we've done some research and uh, I think you have enough capacity based on what we've seen to uh, you're allowed to do both uh, a solar garden and an on-site array as long as it's not more than 120% of your previous 12 months of consumption. So that's, you should be good. And that's part of our process, the same questions that I kind of agree with them too. But yeah, because yeah. yeah. we did that about six years ago. And what would be the timeline for this if we decided? Well, we were talking about earlier, um, number one, we have to get everything approved and that part of it is Excel and looking through that and what's uh, and then the grant, and getting the yep. grant, and then if that all goes through, we were just talking that it'll probably be spring of 25 before we would be able to. The Department of Commerce is supposed to tell everybody that was in the program. We had 30 customers that we loaded in this, in this last round by uh, July 7th, but every time they've told us that date, they have not met their obligations. We meet all the ones that they come up with, but they get to do what they want, I guess. <laughs> so we're at their waiting. Just in my conversations with other superintendents, I think we've got this program, that was the other thing that I did some background checking. They all would like to use more or get more. So their experience has been positive, and so that's what I visited with Rich. Um, and it made it easier to have more conversation just because whatever I heard on the street, I guess. So, yeah. anyway, other questions for Rich? 
we did not have a resolution or anything for a contract tonight because we got to make sure we can do that in July. We just wanted to make sure we had this meeting tonight. They got to hear from you. We can have discussions. So in two weeks, we have another board meeting. Okay, and you guys never vote on this stuff uh, tonight? No, I, I just wanted to make sure these guys heard it. So then we will okay. take it and then at our next board meeting, then we can have a resolution and approve okay. the contract. So Hopefully it won't be, we need to give them up for that? No, 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 we won't. Rich, that's, I just wanted to make sure. So. Or wait, is it two times we need to? This will be the first reading, we'll have a second reading. It's a wonderful three and a half of them. No, yes. it is. It is. We're all familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so Rich, not at all. So we just wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure they have time to digest it and whatnot. And then yep. in two weeks we have another meeting and we'll approve it at that. For sure. Sounds good. And just another note, uh, your attorney that you had mentioned, yeah. um, we're doing a, another project with a different district. That, That's what uh, he said, yeah. I think that was um, Columbia Heights, maybe. Was the school district that uh, the same attorney? Yeah, so we're using sure. that paperwork and just populated it with your stuff, so you'll get a little better deal from the attorney. And he's already blessed it. Yep, he did. He sent me an email and said, "Hey, this is perfect because I'm doing another one for another school, so I'll just kind of loop it together." So, yeah, awesome. Yep. So we will have that, and then we'll have these guys approve what okay. decide what you want to do. I guess I'll say it that way. Have you have those chase the girls? Yeah, Chase has been a part of the, yeah. all the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And what, is, what are his thoughts? Yeah, he feels the same way, I guess. His first questions were, what is everybody else saying about it? You know, what are the other schools saying? So then when Chase and I have met about it, it was the same thing. The other superintendent said, this is good in the building and grounds people. I don't know if he's reached out to them or not, but I don't know. I think I gave you a handful of guys, and you know a lot of them. Yeah. Chase has been positive too. Good. Thanks for asking. Any other questions? Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rich. Safe travels. We'll go on to six point two. Yes, this is uh, the city of Dillard. City administrator. Is the clicker up there? Perfect. You just have to turn it on on the side, and then you have control of the. It worked from there earlier for me. It said it's green if you operated you know, it and everything. It did. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, that was there earlier. What's that? Maybe it'll go over events. Oh, it was like a on the back. Yeah, you got to do a little dance. But yeah. Maybe you can just give me the signal and then yeah, worked perfect right there. That's usually how it goes. Here, new community center for our growing city. And uh, just setting it up here, 
the city wants to make appropriate investments back into the community. And so we're moving forward with plans to replace our existing community center, which I guess it's not existing anymore. It's been taken down because we have a new firewall going in at the current location. And so we're fast approaching the November election, and that's when this is all going to be decided, but it's supposed to be known now. That deadline really is expedited because of the early voting. We take in a multitude of early voters. I think 25, 30, 40% of our voters in Delaware are early voters. So you really have to be ready at that 46 days before an election to get the word out to the best of your abilities. So at the current, well, at the previous community center in town, it was co-located with our fire department about 40 years in age. And we, we had a facilities uh, plan that was done several years ago. I think we commissioned that late 2020, early 21. And it identified, identified a few things that we were trying to accomplish with the new facility, but more so to point out the deficiencies of the existing one. Right, there was no designated areas to support a wider range of needs. When, when I moved up here, I'm from Kentucky, and people said, you know, we have this community center here in town. I went over there and like, oh, we have a social hall. That's all it is, just a social hall. That's for my advantage, right? I mean, it's this general small town community center, but that's all it was. It was, a, it was a great facility, but we really moved beyond that lifespan of it. We want to have more multi-purpose functional spaces inside, a little bit better storage, mechanical equipment, all that stuff is all outdated. And so we that uh, facility study was done and showed that we do need a new facility, which wasn't a surprise to my, uh, too many there. And yes, and sort of the big thing, you know, and yeah, kind of the big thing we were working through that there was determined that the fire hall, which is what we're reconstructing this time, could not be located there at that existing space for safety reasons. We did put out a survey at the time we were doing our study back in 21 uh, to get some of the, you know, some of the highlights of what we would like to see in there. And these are the things that are going to be included in it. So more community space for various activities, which is kind of what we have right now. I don't believe we're envisioning something much larger than that. That fill, or you, that, I think that had taken 300 people, so maybe a little larger than that. That really wasn't the issue with the facility. But we did uh, miss out on opportunity for that youth and senior programming in town with some other multi-purpose uh, multi space inside. Storage, modern kitchen facility, new equipment and technology. One thing I do want to point out though is there on the right hand side about the opportunity for expansion box over there. So envision a envision a box, right? So where this is going to go. We've got this nice little cut out here of the box. And within that box we've got four local boxes. Our local option sales tax is going to be doing this first box. So phase one we'll call it. And that's what this local option sales tax is going to be what it will not be inclusive of, but it's going to be set, setting us up for the future, some of these other amenities that we talk about here. You know, sort of like an indoor walking track, kind of playground, daycare, fitness spaces. And some of those items that we're uh, talking about uh, inside the facility, that's going to be come along with the partnerships that we're forging and funded through different mechanisms. So this area that you see here on the east end of town, so right as you're coming from, from coming from here from Glendon, as you enter there on the right hand side, we have a new rail district uh, that's been constructed out there, multiple commercial businesses, building industry and all that. So the planning commission and city council both in early April agreed upon a location where they would like to see this facility located in working with the developers and uh, the planning commission and other interested individuals. This is the location that was determined. And with that, as you can see right now, it's shaded there in yellow. We have the existing roadways in place. So technically, we wouldn't have to do the future expansion. This is all part of a larger master plan concept that we have going on in the east end of town. And this is one of those first steps in that whole dynamic out there. How large is that space? That's, that's about 10 acres. 10 acres. That's what's and then you're going to use of it initially for you thinking? Uh, for us, uh, not 100% sure. It wouldn't shock me if this is three plus acres. I mean, also keep in mind that we're going to be 
probably constructing a parking lot and other things too that so it's kind of hard to quantify when it's going to be used for all these different facilities out there. We have been in talks with the healthcare provider uh, to locate out there, daycare provider as well, and other interested parties. Again, this has to be a public-private partnership that we're doing. This can't just be us raising funds for, you know, through the local option sales tax, uh, paying for things through bonding, whatever it may be, to fund this whole concept that we would love to see beyond just this sort of whole space. If we want to see all the, this other programming, the healthcare partner and all that, we have to have the private side involved in it. So that's what we're really focusing our efforts on at this time and engaging those relationships. I mentioned earlier that we've done an online survey, so we have been trying to take in community input as we work and go along with this whole process there. And this, this just uh, provides some steps that uh, occur along the way. So back in 21, when we started that study, uh, we had a you know, committee form uh, that's comprised of various individuals in town, landowners out there in that general area, as well as just other interested individuals, members of our planning commission that, you know, help set the priorities and strategic initiatives out there in that general area. Then last uh, May, uh, we formally received authorization from the state of Minnesota to uh, present a half uh, some local option sales tax to the voters. And that's actually a ride that's been, it's, there's a whole lot right now at the state level, so we got in just at the correct time. Uh, there's more going in place right now. There's some like, various conversations going on on both sides. And so any city that went down this year to get approval from the legislature was not able to. There's still a whole lot in community next year as well. So we, we got in right under the right under there, right under that one. So getting down to the numbers of it. So we have a projected cost here of $7.2 million. Now one thing I do want to point out, that was a 2022 estimate as a highlight there. We all know price is going to go up and be higher, but we want to be reflective of the number that we had at that time. Also knowing at that time, we didn't exactly have a identified location yet. So, you know, all these factors may, you know, weigh into the factoring of, of what the um, could end up being. If approved, it will generate about $6.1 million, plus or minus, somewhere in there. Uh, the estimates show about $250,000 a year that we bring in from the local option sales tax. And we have really, it's all, the cities have really seen a boom in this uh, side of things, especially from the online sales. Now that people get from sales tax, at one time, those revenue dollars weren't able to be collected and withheld within a community, but now anything that you purchase online, from your door address or being shipped to your address, gets back, it gets thrown in as part of the local option sales tax. And obviously, we have a really sizable uh, commercial business in Walmart in town as well that's going to help raise that number too. And, and that's also a number that we're going to continually monitor that 6.1, or not the $6.1 million, but that $250,000 number, uh, just to see if we can get a more uh, defined number the closer uh, that we get to it. A lot of cities, most cities, in my experience that I've been speaking with, they're collecting funds much faster than what they originally thought they were going to, a variety of reasons. And granted, the numbers that we get back, they're settling pretty well there. The other funding would come from a combination of tax and maintenance, private investment, facility revenues, and other sources. That gets back to the whole private partner, private public partnership, public private partnership uh, that I was discussing. So there's different mechanisms and tools that we can use to incentivize development and growth in that area so they help us fill in those other boxes at the same time. We get questions about the fire station as well all the time, you know, and, you know, how are we paying for that? And that's been secured through other funding sources. Some of it's locally, but we're also the recipient of $4.4 million from the state bonding bill dollars. Also received $975,000 from the federal government as well. So we're over that 50% mark in being able to fund the you know, give or take $10 million facility. And so why local sales tax? The council chose to go that route because the cost can be shared by obviously all the residents, but anyone else that may take advantage of our 
still a in the community uh, and spend money, tax dollars in our town. So we have most of our customers come to Walmart, not necessarily the Dover residents, but they may be a utilization utilizer of the community center. And we do view this as a uh, regional draw for people. Most renters, just as an FYI, most renters of our community center in town, they're actually not good for the residents, the one that we previously had. I think a lot of people think it's just good for the residents for renting out. The majority of people that renting out are not good for the residents. A lot of that's just because it's affordable and all that, but still, I think it's an important way to make for everybody. And if we don't do the property, so a property tax increase would be another alternative, but obviously that would just be a Dilworth only share. Uh, it's not a permanent, it's, it's not a permanent tax. It goes on until we hit that $6.1 million number or until, uh, or in 25 years, whichever hits first. And I'm thinking it's going to be that $6.1 million at a much faster rate there. Because we have, that's another FAQ we get all the time. Well, once this hits $6.1 million, you're just going to direct it elsewhere. Legally, you can't do that. You all know that too. You can't just go pay salary. Be nice, but unfortunately, we're, we don't have that capability. And the sales tax, the same exemptions apply clothing, groceries, baby products, and hygiene products, all the same exemptions apply for, that, that you uh, get go out to normally purchase goods. Can I ask for, for farmland? Or, you know, that's in Dilworth. Yeah. It's, it's strictly just products that you're purchasing. In the so it's going out to a retail business, nothing to do with properties, uh, land values, anything like that. Anything that's sort of strictly just sales tax on uh, items purchasing in the community. What if it fails? What if it goes down? Well, then we'll reconnect with them, right? Go back to the drawing board, so to speak. At this point, there is no plan B. And it would, yeah, most likely see a delay in construction. A little different, too, uh, between cities and school districts. You know, oftentimes if a school board referendum fails, you know, again, the groups come together, kind of determine what needs to change, be modified, get together, and go back uh, to the voters. Cities are a little different. We're a little more regulated as far as how often we can go back to the poll test to be done. The general election cycle, or when our when our uh, city council is up for election. And you don't see that nearly as often as far as like going back and requesting to go back again. There'd have to be probably some significant changes to it. Once again, keep in mind, we have to get state authorization of open lobby just to be, have this on the phone now. And make your voice heard, right? So we get out, voting is on November 5th, and whoever wants to this thing will, but as I said, that September 20th deadline really changes things for people. We're going to do our best to educate the, pub the public on how to vote early, where to vote early. You know, uh, voting now is going to be held at the Lutheran Church. There's a big educational component that goes to all of this about just getting out the word about the election. And we're trying to do our best to educate everybody in the, you know, the best way to use there. And this is where we want to be directing people to DilworthOnTrack.com. This is the info that has everything that I covered today and handles all those FAQs, voting information, what the cost and impact is. Uh, we also have some, have some informational brochures as well that we hand out to everyone. But our website's really good. It's a really high traffic volume, actually. Uh, but we want to direct as many people there as we can to answer questions concisely and to cover all of our bases. And with that said, I believe that's all we have. Can I answer any questions? When, when, when the construction started, it does, does pass. Yeah. November, so in, in the event that it were to pass, we go in right away and start engineering design. I would anticipate that lasting every bit of a year, if not more. So that's, so that's all the way through 25. I think 26 at the earliest is when we can see construction take place out there. Are you envisioning something kind of like the West Fargo Rusted Center? Yes. 
Maybe, That's what I envision, but <laughs> yeah, they don't. Have to. And we went out and uh, toured multiple sites, including the Rust Ed Center, and had a lot of those amenities they have inside. <coughs> so, again, what we're doing with our first phase here is not going to fund all of that. But we hope in the, with the public private partnership that we can get to some of those amenities that they offer as well. Sure. So, we'll cover questions uh, for the big box store, Walmart, things like that. Probably not going to affect them a whole lot. But is this, you know, even though it's a half a cent or a half percent, so on and so forth, you, you think you're going to have a little less uh, support from the smaller business owners on, you know, all already their price points are, are at the top and with their buying power being a smaller one, they have to increase again. Is that going to shift some of that business over back to more ads than it would deliver? Right. Well, keep in mind they already have their own sales tax over there. So we're actually behind everybody else. Most, again, that's according to, we hired a communication strategist to help us put together a lot of this. One of the things that keeps saying through all this, there's generally not a lot of Wayne support uh, in that regard. People are generally pretty supportive in that sense, knowing that's going to be spread to everybody, and the cost of it and the impact is relatively minimal. I guess you're kind of asking, a, it's a hard question to answer. You know, I'm not really sure what the formal reaction will be. But our goal is to go out and connect and engage with all the business owners. They are understanding of the impact that it may potentially have uh, with them because while they may have all these same taxes in Moorhead, that's what they're doing the library with right now, maybe that's something that's attractive to them that's keeping them in Dilworth right now. So it is something that you have to balance and weigh through the whole process. Yeah, that's it's a little bit of a TBD. I think in, in my ideal world, this would be something that is that has a private investment in it, and that would be part of that. Like maybe it'd be a situation where we own lease out the land to a private entity. I'm just going to say the YMCA, for example, you know, and they would be the one for running the facility. So right now, the city of Dilworth did everything. We booked. People right. coming in all is not user friendly. Just I'm sorry, the current system is still up. What we're trying to do with that was not user friendly at all. Right. It's just, it was horrible. Yeah. So if it's the same entity that's running that ran that, it's going to run this, will be different other than it's new and shiny, but you would still have the same problems on the back side. So mm -hmm. I don't want it to not be successful if you have the same issues from the board. Right. Right. And, and that was kind of the, and again, from my vantage, the city probably doesn't need to be in the rental industry, especially as we're getting into a larger type of, you know, larger type of businesses that are going to be operating within it. And now that's people know that though, and we, uh, yeah, we want to make it as efficient and effective as possible. But on the flip side, we never made any bones about this wasn't a, you know, this is the Holiday Inn or some kind of, mm -hmm. Mass rental facility over there. I mean, but, yeah, the locals are having issues trying to use the facilities, mm -hmm. and they don't because there's a lot that don't. Mm -hmm. And that should tell you something right there too. Yeah. I think it's a great opportunity for the city of Dilworth. I'm very excited about it. I have a parent that lives in Dilworth. He's lived there for 47 years, and I think he's happy that you're not paying on property tax after the whole, you know, redoing the streets and stuff. Just his little old house was, you know, almost $10,000 to replace, you know, just his little part in front of his uh, home. So uh, definitely, I think the, the lions are talking about it. Let's just put it that way, the Dilworth lions. So hopefully you go over and talk to them and give them a pep talk. Yeah, we hope. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, this is everyone's facility, right? Yeah. And so we want everyone to have a voice and we want everyone to participate in the process and give us feedback and uh, other things that they would like to see go into the facility. At the end of the day, it's theirs and their decision. The website was a good idea. I've sent a few people to it already Absolutely. and it's got a lot of great information, even if it's in the beginning stages. Absolutely. Yeah. Money well spent. I think as you do these presentations too, Peyton, and by the way, nice job with the presentation.
<laughs> as the guinea pigs, yes, yes, right. yes. Uh, but it, it's informative, right? It's got the information that people need, yeah. and then it leads you to a website that you do your own research, right? Mm -hmm. So awesome. Right? That's what we want to do, and we had the numbers, but the, the traffic to it is surprisingly it's like really hot. It's amazing. So we we have scheduled social media posts that go out there. There's certain spikes at certain times of the day. Sure. We have it's all identified out in the schedule. Yeah, this is again is our first presentation. So maybe we'll drop uh, Nicole now we'll get this down. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna travel yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I'm of it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for me? This is also a one pager. I just I don't know if it's one page or not. Maybe got one here for like a number or whoever. Was there any literature that needs to go out to families so we can do that or provide that or make any other presentation. That's other thing too, uh, why we're wanting to engage with everyone here is, you know, we don't know every group to go out and engage with, right? So there may be other sports organizations under the DGF umbrella, right? That may find interest in this. And so we're always open to taking all ideas that you have, making ourselves available, chatter out of the way. Here and, and we're just all about educating the public. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we have copies of this at the district office. So okay. I'll give these to Brooke or we'll make sure it gets Perfect. back there so we can have them available so they can see it as well. Absolutely. Yep. Perfect. Well, if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to slow down my way back. We got to be able to going on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to 6.3 budget. Um, I think we talked a little bit about um, the aspects of the budget, of the budget committee meeting at the work session. Um, and we're working through that. Obviously, it's um, right now we're um, trying to set the budget for following for the next year. And budget yep. tonight. So um, I don't know Shannon if you've got any updates but maybe we'll just save that for the, for the yeah, I, I mean it's a tight year um, because we're not getting a huge chunk from the state and we have a lot of mandates that are that are part of um, the new legislation the last couple of years uh, that are not really funded this next year. So um, yeah, I guess I guess the cliff note version is the state gave us four percent a year ago that had a lot of mandates, uh, seventy six mandates that were tied to public education that ate up two to two and a half percent of that four percent. Now those mandates are still there, and the state's going to give us two percent new money. Well, the two percent is getting eaten up by mandates, and there's not much left over, and that's we're not. We're in a tighter spot, no question, and so, and that's the cliff note version of, that's where it is, right? It's tied to mandates for the most part. Um, well, they, uh, so, they talked about our concern with uh, our kindergarten numbers right now, yes. not where we're, where we're hoping they were to be, because last year we were at 130-ish. We ended up with 134. And then um, right so. now we have, what's the number today? 80. Have we generated any leads based on the sign? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I haven't signed any new, uh, but it's been a week, so it's been a while. Again, if you're out there and you have a kindergartner, please sign up. <laughs> please sign up. <laughs> please register. Yeah. So that's a big issue. Twenty new uh, kindergartners over the summer, which has been typical, would go a long way. Thirty would go longer. Yes. <laughs> so, but anyway, and that's kind of what we're. How about fifty? Fifty is fine. You know, fifty. Yeah, we could do fifty actually. And the number is where it is. That would get us to where we are today. So yes, we would do that. Thanks. Questions or comments on the budget committee? All right, let's go on to the board work session. Um, I don't know who wants to tackle that, but I guess you know, we talked a little bit about the strategic plan, um, where we're at, uh, some of that. Um, we know we're basically the last three years um, kind of a look back at some of the things that we've done over the last three years, the things that we've accomplished, and then um, just a little uh, 
don't know, maybe not a review, but a little bit of review of Shannon's work that he's done uh, over the last three years. I don't know, is there anything else that you can do? I know. Okay, you're looking at me, so I was looking at Brittany. Okay, I was looking at Brittany. Okay, I was looking at Brittany. I'm across the anyone. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think it was a good work session. We also talked about FY25 and some of the things we're hoping to accomplish in the year coming up, and then obviously this last year what we accomplished are things that were accomplished. So, yeah, it was, it's just good to meet like that and kind of just more visit about what's been happening or what's going to happen. It's just kind of a nice yeah, atmosphere, I guess. So, yeah. it, was, it was pretty good. Any other any questions or comments on the work session? All right, let's go on to 6.4, superintendent report. Okay, hey, mine is really short tonight, just I knew we had a lot of other things tonight. Uh, with the uh, solar panel presentation from Ideal Energies and then obviously Peyton. So just uh, during our work session, we talked about the August board meeting, so they're gonna be on the 5th and 19th now. Uh, and that's because we have uh, board elections and people have to get signed up or get their names in as a nomination, or not a nomination, but as a candidate. So the 5th and the 19th will be our August board meetings. Um, and then fund budget. So this is, uh, I did enrollment uh, at the last board meeting. This one I was gonna do funds two and four. I'm not doing it tonight because we had all these other presentations. So I will do uh, fund two and fund four presentations uh, in July. And then we'll get into more details on the whole budget after that. So just kind of a break on so public can kind of see uh, fund one cannot spill over, I'm sorry, fund two or fund four can't spill into one, but our general budget can go into there to bail them out if we need to. So I'll talk about that a little bit uh, next month. So I guess if, there, if there's anything else for me that's tonight, I was just going to kind of keep it simple. But anything? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Shannon. Let's go on to 7.1. This is a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes on June 10th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Amy. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Go on to the consent agenda. Uh, 8.1. Approve the bills for June 2024 in the amount of. $273,318.32. Um, your treasurer's monthly budget report is part of your packet. In there. We had a chance to look at that. Um, it's also approved the resignation of Marianne Ann Martin, Special Education Director, effective June 3 of 2024. Approved the resignation of Cassidy Zadiga, elementary teacher, effective at the end of the 2023 2024. School year and approve the resignation of Mackenzie Parala, paraprofessional, effective at the end of the 2023 2024 school year. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Amy. Amy. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, second by Lindsay. I'm not trying to <laughs> force you to do that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Any questions or discussion? Well, I just want to make a comment. Uh, Marianne Martin has given pretty much her whole career to the DG of Public School. And so I just think uh, it's an appropriate time to say thank you to her. Um, I know you guys have each shared with her a little bit over the last few months as this transition's happening uh, with our special ed going to the Lake Agency. But I just want to publicly say thank you to Marianne and all the things she's done for our school and for our students, so. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, and wish her well in her new endeavors. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Did she give, I mean, I know that that's a personnel thing, but um, she came and presented to our board and said that everything was good, and now we have a resignation, and obviously I, I missed our work session, so maybe I missed something there, but. Yep, she took a job with Lakes Country Service Cooperative. So she's gonna work on Fergus Falls instead of on a holiday. So she got offered a job there for Lakes, uh, Lakes Country Service Cooperatives, kind of. Um, and I don't want to misspeak, it's like a coordinator overseeing all the directors in the region, and she's going to help Lakes Country with that. So she she was looking at that before, um, and kind of decided she would stay with Lake Agassi, and then had more conversations, I guess. So, yeah. so with that happening, then 
see, we had the contract with her still. Yeah. And so then when she came back and decided to go to work for her lakes country instead of Lake Agency, um, then she said she would have to resign her position because she'll have a contract with them. So, yep. Any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to 9.1. Uh, this is uh, for a motion to approve the designation of the Northwestern Bank of Dilworth, MSD LAF, and MSD Max as official depositories for 2024 2025 school year. Do I have a motion? Motion by Mike. Do I have a second? Second by Nicole. Any questions or discussion? I think they maybe asked this a couple of years ago, but is there a reason we don't um, switch between the different banks that are in? I mean, I know that that's a process, but some of the other schools I've worked in as a SRO, they have um, like kind of shared the love between the banks in town. So I don't want to speak out of turn. I know we do share a little love in the, so we use Northwestern for this, but we use no, Bremer, we use, yeah, yes, we do a little we just bit split of the difference between the yeah. yeah. Uh, Always open for discussion. Got all the good questions tonight, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> That's fine. I, yeah. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to 9.2. This is a motion uh, to set the district wide impressed fund at a replenishable maximum of $6,000 effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025, and authorize Marcus Askvig, Brooke Belka, and Shannon Hunstead to sign and issue checks. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Nicole. Any questions or discussion? It is. Um, hearing more questions or discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 9.3. This is a motion to authorize Treasurer or Shannon Hunstead, Superintendent of Schools, to invest the school district cash pursuant to board policy effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Amy. Amy. Sorry. That's a <laughs> second. Laura, Laura said she's going to second. Laura said second. Okay. Why not? Uh, any questions or discussion? <laughs> all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to 9.4. Fiscal year 25 budget. This is to approve the fiscal year 25 preliminary budget as presented. Uh, do I have a motion? Second. Motion by Nicole. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Laura. Um, questions or discussion? Yeah, so if you look at it, um, our, our uh, general fund is looking at a $310,937 deficit spending. Um, as you guys recall from the last few years, we do this very conservatively because it's kind of what we have to be. Um, that's with our current enrollment, or I'm sorry, that's with 1535 as an enrollment. Um, we are projecting right now with our 70 or 80 kindergartners, we're right around that number. So anything we get above and beyond the 1535 will obviously, and you know, just easy math, it's not exactly this, but if you figure about 9,000 a student, okay? It's a little more than that, but it's not worth counting because that's that buffer too. Um, that's one thing. So you figure 20 times 9,000, okay, you can cut that in more than half, right? And so that's, this is a conservative number because it's kind of what we have today. This also has to figure in benefit packages for all of our employees because they all could take it. If they don't, then there's obviously this gets cut out of that. So enrollment and benefits are two probably the biggest factors that could bring this number back down. Um, enrollment being obviously the biggest factor. So. Uh, my hope with this 310, as conservative as it is, with all of our numbers across all budgets, um, that we can we can get it down closer to 100 pretty quick, 
and then it's just a matter of, okay, we're going to manage our spending, so can we kind of zero it out by the end of the year? That's my hope. Um, it was looking way worse than that. If you remember in our budget meetings, and then we were looking at an $800,000 deficit, so we've had some adjustments there to help get it down to 310, but still need more kindergartners. <laughs> 20 more kindergartners, uh, that would really go a long way. So, anyway. Any other, any questions or Shannon on the budget? I, I, sh and I apologize, but I should say too, you see food service is gonna have a little bit of a surplus based on that community head. And if you look at this year's, as we close out this year, community ed is showing $117,000 deficit next year. That's based on today's numbers. Now we know that, again, that's ultra conservative. That number is gonna be better. This year we're gonna finish up with the positive again in the community ed. Uh, but that, w without knowing how that's gonna end, you gotta play it this way just to be safe. Um, and so just want you to understand that, that this number at 117, Anytime you get about $100,000 deficit that's there kind of as a buffer, most of the time that's a zeroed out account. We should, we should be able to get it back to zero. Um, but you also have to play it safe because if it doesn't, because if there's factors we can't control, I can say that there's different things that happen in a school year with staffing. Uh, we have a, just for next year, we have about $100,000 additional cost in staffing uh, in our K-12 education that we did no way you could plan for. But it's still 100000 so it's kind of the same here. Things can happen, and yeah, we can only control so much. That's why I always like to keep that buffer. So. Sure. Any other uh, any questions or comments or concerns? If, if you, I'm sorry, no, 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 I'll keep interrupting you now. But, um, the other thing, if you look at this budget, it's a 3.89% increase overall in spending. And our but our revenue is like 2.4 overall total package from the state and local and all that. So there's your because every percent in our budget is about 190 thousand. So you're looking at two percent, not even two percent. So it's it, I'm just trying to give you a perspective of we're 100 thousand votes. It's 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 less than a percent so of our budget. So. Anyway. You know our legislators. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, if you got rid of the mandates, we'd be fine. So, same money, less same mandates. Family. You gotta hear from us. Yes. Yep. Camps. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, we are meeting, uh, the Clay County Superintendents are meeting on Thursday, and then we're setting a meeting up with our local legislators for July, for senators and representatives from our region. So, to talk about this. So this is a good every, idea. Every school across the state is having difficulties. So it's worth noting that we're not uh, we're not alone here. And, um, a, lot of, a lot of communities, a lot of schools that have operated referendums, or will be going out to the voters uh, this this November with operating referendums. Yeah, close by. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. On to 9.5. This is a motion to approve uh, right specialty insurance, the property, general liability, auto prime, inland and marine uh, directors and operators in excess, and risk administration service mortgage office providers for the fiscal year 2025. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mike. Uh, any questions or discussion? We discussed this quite a bit before, but we have discussed yep. it. But it's yep. one of the things that we're raising our deductible to fifty thousand from ten. Uh, it's going to be about a thirty thousand dollar increase. But our square footage was not up to speed in the past. Now we have the entire building and complex covered, which is important. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Any questions or discussion? I'm hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. On to 9.6. This is for a uh, motion to approve a resolution establishing the dates for filing affidavits of candidacy for the Austin office as a school board member. We have a motion. So moved. Motion by Nicole. Have a second. Second by Brady. All right. 
Dates shall be in substantially the following. First Avenue, Northwest Dilworth, Minnesota, 56529. The filing fee for this office is $2. A candidate for this office must be an eligible voter, must be 21 years of age or more on assuming office, and must have school district election 30 days before the general election, and must have no other evidence of Say aye. Aye. 
and goals motion carries. Under 9.10, this is for the certified contract for Caitlin Nelson Street, elementary teacher, BA step four, effective at the start of 2024-25 school year. Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion by Brenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mike. Uh, any questions or discussion? What grade with level is this? She is the third grade. Yep. We have a medical leave, so yep. Yep, this one would be for that position. Okay. Yep. Right. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to 9.11s for a certified contract for Michaela Backlund, elementary teacher, MA plus 30, step 10, effective at the start of the 2024-2025 school year. We have a motion. Oh. Motion by Brittany. We have a second. Second. Second by Nicole. Any questions or discussion? Uh, this is the kindergarten to replace the re resignation we had earlier. Oh. Yep. Right. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And 9.12. This is approved the certified contract for Kara Dollinger, middle school math teacher, BA, step three, effective at the start of the 2024 25 school year. Do I have a motion? Moved. Motion by Lindsay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Amy. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 10.1. The next school board meeting will be Monday, July 8th at 6 p.m. here in the DGF community room. And following that will be the facilities transportation committee meeting. And we'll go on to 11. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So motion by Nicole. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brittany. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.